Today, we're looking at a brown ink from Pilot Iroshizuku, their Yamaguri. As always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, I'd appreciate you checking out the entire video. And if you like brown inks, there's a link to that playlist down in the description. Now, if you don't know me, I'm Adam and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. And if you do know me, welcome back. The first three papers used for the writing samples are Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia. Let's take a look at that first one, 90 GSM, Clairefontaine. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade. Take a look at how brown is much lighter than the word fox. Lazy goes from lighter to darker, only four seconds to dry. Medium is about the same tone as the extra fine. With no feather spread, halo sheen, very nice shading. Look at quick is much lighter than the word the, and quick goes from darker to lighter to darker, and seven seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show good color variation, and we are getting it in the writing and the smear test. You could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with this Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, this Jinhao X450 with a medium, and this Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Kaweco Sport with a 1.5 stub was inked up, used for day, and used to take the notes for this video. Now the second writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, and no shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, only moments of shading. The is darker than the word quick. In brown, the B is darker than the rest of the word eight seconds to dry. Now, medium is the same tone as the stub, with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, 17 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both do show some color variation. It does show in the extra fine, not at all in the medium. In the smear test, you could recover this if you smeared while you were writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down, and then it's immediately put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this kind of green-leaning gray at the bottom push its way up, and a very dark, rich brown at the top. The line is being formed on the bottom by that kind of gray tone. And this is where things become interesting when we look at the second chromatography. It was allowed to dry for 10 minutes before it dunked into water. And we see that that grayish green all stayed at the bottom. Now, as it pushes up, we see a magenta tone that we did not see in the other chromatography. And then that same rich brown at the top. The last standard paper is 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. We have no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, some shading. Brown starts darker and gets lighter. Quick goes from darker to lighter to darker. Jumps goes from lighter to darker, five seconds to dry. Now, medium is darker than the extra fine, but not quite as dark as the stub. With no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade, just not as obviously as the extra fine. If you look at brown, you see it goes from darker to a lighter dark tone. Fox, the O, is a bit lighter in the middle of those two very dark letters. Nine seconds to dry. Now, the scrubby for both do show some good color variation, and we are getting it in the writing, just in very different ways. And the smear test shows you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before it's tested. And looking at the highlighter, it handles it incredibly well. This is a great note-taking ink, especially for those that need to be able to go back and highlight. It did not budge, which is obvious when you go look at the water. 
which did nothing to it. But this is a great opportunity that I hope the picture comes through. You've got this kind of green sheen that's showing on the swatch. Now, it doesn't show up in any of the writing, but that green sheen would have looked amazing if it came through. Pen flush is starting to break up some of the darkest tones off the top, just the brown out of that chromatography. But all of that stuff that was in the line, still very much there and bonded to the paper. The one third bleach solution is almost completely removing it. You see some discoloration, not all the ink came off the paper. However, it only took water to get this out of my pen. The paper for the additional writing samples is changed up regularly, and this next one is Moji paper. We have no bleeding and no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading. Look at how the O in jumps is lighter than the F and X. The K in quick is darker, Q in quick is darker. Lazy goes from dark to light, three seconds to dry. Wow. Medium is darker than the extra fine, just a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no real shading here, five seconds to dry. Now the scrubby for both do show some color variation, although it's really not happening for the medium, but the smear test says you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Uroshizuku's Yamaguri, or Wild Chestnut, has a viscosity of 2.33, making it normal. If you're interested in how the viscosity is tested and all of that stuff, there's a link to that video down in the description. The next paper we're going to look at, though, is Loistrum 1917 paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is quite a bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading like quick goes darker to lighter to darker and brown goes darker to lighter. Jumps goes lighter to darker, three seconds to dry. Medium is just as dark as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shading, five seconds to dry. The scrubby of the extra fine shows some color variation and we got it. The medium showed none, we didn't expect it and we didn't get it. The smear test, I'm not sure that you could recover it on this paper if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Uroshizuku's Yamaguri, or Wild Chestnut, has an average dry time of 8 seconds, making it a bit faster drying than normal. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. A crowd favorite. Now, as you would expect, the scrubby showed through. We do get spots of bleeding that is occurring. It is not touching the page underneath, but it is dark enough and enough of them that you could not use the back of the paper, or you might destroy both sides for the notes. That results in a lot of ghosting here as well. Now, the medium has a ton of feathering all over it, but it's very tiny. Not something that would stop people from using this paper. It does spread to about a broad. It has no halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is just a little bit lighter than the stub. It has some tiny feathering that's going on, but again, it's more of a general wooliness the whole way over, but it wouldn't stop most people from using this ink. It does spread to about a fine. It has no halo sheen or shade and one second to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation, which we're not getting. In the smear test, you could definitely recover it if you smeared while you were writing. Instead of finding inks that look like Hiroshizuku's Yamaguri or Wild Chestnut, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went for a nice orange with this brown. I went with Caran Dash Electric Orange. If you would prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to playlists and you can check them out there. So what do I think of Hiroshizuku's Yamaguri or Wild Chestnut? It shades nice when it's shading and has tone variation. 
that I just don't care for. I should like this. I don't. I do like its lighter tones, though. I'm going to pass on a bottle of this. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? Wet pens just drown out any of the shading and make it too dark to really enjoy as a tone. But your medium to dry flow, medium and fine nibs really can give you some of the tone variation, show off some of its darker tones that are nice in moderation. I hope you got something out of this video and tomorrow we're gonna be taking a look at Lamy's Blue Black.